I tell you, I, I love the Lord. I love his church. I love Sundays. And I really love Easter Sunday. And I, I especially like Easter Sunday because there's a chance that the whole world could stop and consider dead things come back to life. Whether we're talking about dead hearts or dead marriages or dead relationships or dead souls, dead things come back to life. Hallelujah. I know that we have several uh, guests with us this morning here at the crossing, and I want to welcome you. And I thought I might just to tell you a little bit about our church. Uh, here at the crossing, we are a non-denominational, independent Christian church that would just like to keep pointing people to Jesus. My name's Mark. I'm a senior minister here. And I also want to, you know, I want to introduce myself to everybody because you might not recognize me in this jacket. <clears throat> so uh, we are so grateful that you're here. Our mission at this church is developing devoted followers of Jesus who will develop the Voted followers of Jesus who will, you know, it's just perpetual. That's our mission. Our model here at this church is that of a family. All we want to do is to raise a strong, healthy, functional, responsible church family. And everybody needs a church family. If you're looking for a church family, hey, you are welcome here. Welcome to the crossing. The bottom line of ministry uh, for us here is really simple. It all comes down to this. Place your full trust in Jesus. Just place your full trust in Jesus based upon what he's already said in Scripture. You can't go wrong. That's our bottom line. If you're here for the first time, I'd love to encourage you to fill out a connection card in the pew right in front of you. You can put in the offering slots on the back wall on the way out. If an email address lands on that card, I'll send you an email this week. Just kind of welcome you uh, to our church family. And uh, that just helps us be a better, better church. If you've been around uh, a couple weeks and you've never taken Starting Point, we're offering Starting Point this coming Tuesday in the chat room at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., Love to have you take Starting Point at some point. We do it every month. And uh, so the next one is this coming Tuesday, 6 o'clock. And something you need to know about today, I mean implement today. When we leave here, when you're dismissed and you get in the car and you head out of the parking lot, uh, sometimes there tends to be a 5, 10 minute backup. Well, today uh, we're kind of experimenting. We're gonna have a, we have a state trooper out there. So when he realizes the backup has begun, he's going to br very bravely jump out there in front of, you know, northbound traffic and stop them. And he's going to wave to you. When he waves to you, you are going to, you know, very carefully but very quickly get through there. And you have to turn north. Don't try to cut across. You have to turn north and go north. And, and then if you have to go south, just make a U-turn at one of the U-turn spots. But you have to go north. You got that? Say it. Go north. All right. I'm just making sure. Paul, was that okay? All right. Go north. Uh, this is experiment. It may happen every Sunday for us from here on out, but we want the state trooper to like us at the end of the day. Go north. Hey, I want to welcome everyone here to the most non-religious holiday of the year. Easter is not a religious holiday. We do not gather here today and celebrate some religious theory. We do not gather here today to honor some philosophical perspective. We gather here today to celebrate and honor an event that happened in history that changed the world. Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we're here. That's why we're here at a real time, at a real place, almost 2,000 years ago. And secular and sacred historians verify it. Jesus arose from the grave. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. There's a deep tradition in a lot of old churches that when the preacher gets up, and says something like, Christ the Lord has risen today. The fellowship responds, Christ has risen indeed, right? 
You've heard about that maybe. I would like, I would like for us to try that today uh, t- two times. Now, the first time I want us to try it is just going to be our bold confession to the Lord and to each other. All right? Are, are you with me? Christ the Lord has risen today. Christ has risen today. Oh, that, that was awesome. But I want to do it a second time. And this time, I want to row you up a little bit, okay? I, I, I want you to, you know, kind of a little, just be a little rowdy with it because this time, I want us to scare the devil. So with your outside voices, you know, join me. Christ the Lord has risen today. Yes, I think he was scared to California on that one. Uh, he might have heard you. Uh, sorry, sorry, Fordo. Mm. Christ is risen indeed. And we're really here to celebrate an empty tomb. We celebrate today an empty tomb. Listen, Muhammad's tomb's not empty. Buddha's tomb is not empty. Joseph Smith's tomb is not empty. Only Jesus has a tomb that you can go visit, you can go see, you can look inside, and you will find he is not there. Christ has risen indeed. Here at the Crossing, uh, every month, every first Sunday of the month, we start a brand new sermon series, and our sermon series for the month of April 2018 is just called Alive. A lie. It's a sermon series from the book of 1 Thessalonians uh, in the New Testament. And we're going to spend all month in the book of 1 Thessalonians. The book was written to a church who got it. Uh, it, was, it was written to a church that they, they understood what was really going on. In fact, they're a model church. The, the church mentioned in 1 Thessalonians at Thessalonica there is um, they were a, a church that was a lie. And here's the deal, because Jesus is alive, you can be alive, and I can be alive, and together as a church, we can be alive. That's what we want here, a church that's alive. So we want to encourage every one of you to be reading through and reflecting through the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians this month. And uh, there's only five chapters. It's, it's chock full of goodness. And you probably get through that, you know, seven or eight times during the month. It's just so good. So that's where we're going to be uh, in this month. Of April. Today, the passage I have ready for us comes from the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, just two verses, verses 13 and 14. Check this out. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who have fallen asleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Christ died and rose again, and we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. May the Lord bless the reading and the preaching of his word. Amen? What the apostle, what the author had in store for this church in Thessalonica is the same thing that I want for every one of you today in this place. What the apostle had in store is he wanted them to know something, he wanted them to believe something, and then he wanted them to actually go and do something. Same here. Today, I want every one of you to know something, and I want you to believe something, and I want you to leave here ready to do something. And I hope those are just kind of natural responses to some stories I want to share with you today. Uh, Some of my favorite stories. And I hope these stories will just provoke a great response in your heart. Story number one. Did you hear uh, about the middle-aged woman who had a heart attack? She was 42. She had a heart attack, was rushed to the hospital, and while in the hospital, she had one of those near-death experiences. She saw the Lord. Now, when she saw the Lord, she said to the Lord, is that it? Am I going to die? And the Lord said, no, darling, that's not it. You're not going to die. In fact, you have about 33 years left to lie, to live. So she kind of came to After time of recovery, she decided, 
I'm just going to stay in the hospital and get some things fixed. So, she got a facelift, a tummy tuck, liposuction, a few other augmentations here or there. Because she thought, man, if I got 33 more years to live, I'm going to make the most of it, right? After her last procedure, she recovered and she was discharged. She walked out of the hospital. She was crossing the street and an ambulance smacked right into her and killed her on the spot. She like gets to heaven ticked off. She goes right up to the Lord, really? I thought you said I had 33 more years to live. And the Lord responded, well, well you did. It's just that I didn't recognize you. <laughs> uh. That's a joke. That's a joke, all right? It's probably a, not a good joke to tell on Easter Sunday. And I would say I repent, but I'd have to repent one more time today. And then, you know, it's a joke. But this next story it is no joke. Um, I want to share some favorites. This first one comes from Mark chapter 5. I, I don't have the words for you for, for a couple of these stories because... I just want you to listen. I just want you to imagine it. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. That, by the way, is the best response you could have when you see Jesus. He pleaded earnestly with Jesus, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. While Jesus was still speaking to some people, some people from the house of uh, Jairus, the synagogue leader, came and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, hey, don't be afraid. Just believe. Just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in. He said to the people, why all this commotion? Why all the wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother, the disciples who were with him. They went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And at this, they were completely astonished. And you know, when they walked out of her bedroom and they walked into the family room where everybody was gathered, you know, someone without hesitation, without any thinking about it, you know, with, you know, just blurted out, she's alive! She's alive! Alive. How about this story? It's, it's from Luke chapter 7. This is a great one. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. His disciples and a loud crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Oh. Here's a lady. She's, she's a widow, and, and now she loses her only son. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. When Jesus saw her, his heart went out to her. And she said, uh, he said to her, don't cry. Then he went up and he touched the buyer they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up. 
the dead man sat up, began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe, and they praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared to us. God has come to help his people. And the news about him spread everywhere. And you know in that crowd, you know as soon as that young man sat up and began to speak, someone just blurted out, He's alive! He's alive. Alive. Let me tell you the story of Jesus. Actually, I'm just going to read uh, Peter telling you the story of Jesus. Peter finds himself, uh, which happens to be the first day of the church. I mean, the very first day that the church gets started, Peter finds himself explaining the gospel for the first time since the death, burial, and resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. He, he finds himself explaining the gospel for the first time. Listen to what he says. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, dressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all who live in Jerusalem. Hey, let me explain this to you. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did among you, and you yourselves know this. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, you with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? They were like, We know he's alive. We know he's alive. We've seen him. He's alive. And, but we want to make it right. What can we do? And here's what Peter told them. Repent. Turn around. Change your mind about who he is. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted the message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Now that's a good day. 3,000 people were like, oh, we know he's alive and we want to be alive. And 3,000 of them accepted the message, were baptized and were added. And that was day number one of the church. This last story I have for you, I do have the words on the screen because I want you to see it because this is your story. This is your story. At least it can be your story. Romans chapter 6, check this out. I, this is one of my favorites. Don't you know, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, we too may live a new life. Verse 5, for if, for if, the biggest word in all the Bible, you know, in significance anyway, if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is our story. This is Easter right here, personalized. This is the gospel. This is the grace message of Jesus. You and I, when we come to Christ, when we trust Christ, we put our faith in Christ, we start listening to Christ, we surrender to Christ. He gives us a brand new life. That's the gospel. And that's Easter, personalized, and that's our story. Listen, the Bible tells us that when we die with him and are buried with him, when resurrected with him, you and I are granted a brand new life. Isn't that awesome? Alive. Alive. Do you remember our first text that uh, I pointed you to from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? Brothers and sisters, we, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who have fallen asleep in death 
so that you're not grieving like the rest of mankind who have absolutely no hope. No, for we believe Jesus died and was rose from the dead, and we believe God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Amen? The apostle wanted his audience to know something, to believe something, and to do something. Here's what I want you to know. Death is not the end. When you go to a funeral, death is not the end. Death is not the end. For human lives, death is not the end. There's something else. Now, to just give you a simple illustration that kind of proves the possibility of that, I want you to take a, a little kernel of corn, and I want you to bury it in the ground. What happens? It dies. Kind of rots. It dies. And then springs back to life. What? Yeah. Alive. Huh. So here's what I want you to know. Death is never the end. Here's what I want you to believe. Resurrection is a reality. Resurrection is real. Dead things come back to life. And because Jesus came back to life, you and I are going to come back to life. Because Jesus was victorious over the grave for himself, he is triumphant over the grave for all of us. Resurrection is real. And the Bible says, not only is resurrection a possibility, it is going to happen for every one of us. Every one of us, every human life is going to experience a resurrection. Now the Bible tells us that those who love Jesus, follow Jesus, listen to Jesus, live in awe of Jesus, uh, you know, obey Jesus, trust Jesus, we're going to be resurrected to be with him forever, to eternal life. And forever is like forever and ever. I mean, it's a really long time. But the Bible also warns that those who reject Jesus and don't trust Jesus and who ignore Jesus, maybe even who marginalize Jesus, oh, they're going to be resurrected as well, and they're going to be re rewarded with eternal destruction. We don't want that for anyone here. We don't want that for anyone. Resurrection is real. I want you to know that death is never the end. I want you to believe resurrection is real. And here's what I want you to do. I just want you to live out what you believe. I just want you to live a life of hope. Christ followers are full of hope. This world, it, it, it's, it's temporary. We're just passing through. There's something greater to come. And you and I need to be living our lives out of hope, so full of hope. Don't be like the rest of mankind. Don't grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. We believe Jesus rose from the dead. Live your life. Go into this next week. Head into the future just living out great hope. That's what I want you to do. So full of hope. Typically, I like to end a sermon with a prayer, just asking the Lord, bless us and bless you. And just. And my prayer for every one of you today is that you just be so full to overflowing with resurrection hope. That's my prayer. Every one of you, just so full, so overflowing with resurrection hope. That's my prayer. But today, I don't want to close in a prayer. I want to close by showing you a video of something that has happened around here in the last couple of weeks. And you're going to see a video of uh, about six different individuals who are dying with, being buried with, and resurrecting with Jesus to live a brand new life. Check this out. 